Hey everybody, Melissa here. So you may find yourself in a situation where you have to predict or forecast future sales based on past sales in LibreOffice Calc. Now it's fairly easy to do with some formulas and functions. And while it might not be exact, it can give us a pretty good idea of where we might fall. It's going to predict what our max sales could be, what our minimum sales could be, and then tell us where we might fall in between there. And then we'll have access to some pretty cool charts and data that we can either look at ourselves or present to our management team. I cannot wait to show you how this works. So let's go ahead and get started. So here we have a spreadsheet containing sales data from when our company began in 2001 through 2021. Well, we want to forecast sales from 2022 through 2027. So let's start out by doing just a straightforward linear forecast function and see what we get here. So there are a couple ways that we can insert this function. We can do it directly from the cell. We can do it from the input line, or we can do it from the function wizard. Now we're going to be working with absolute cell references. So I'm going to use the function wizard because it takes care of those for us. And then we don't have to go back and make them absolute cell references ourselves. So if we go to our function and we type in forecast and select it, and we're going to do next, our value is what are we looking for? Well, we're looking for sales for 2022. So I'm going to select 2022. So we have data Y and data X. And what this is, is what data are we going to use to return our values? Well, data Y is going to be our sales. So we're going to select sales from the time we opened our company in 2001, all the way down to 2021. And if you notice, I was talking about this just a second ago, it puts our dollar signs where they need to be to make this an absolute cell reference. Our data X is what years are we looking at? Well, we're looking at 2001 through 2021. And then we're going to tell it OK. So that gives us a forecast of $1,004,974. Now we can go ahead and double click and it will fill it in. And this gives us our forecast from 2022 through 2027. Now we're going to feed LibreOffice Calc a little bit more information so it can give us a better idea of where our future sales might fall. We're going to get our forecast sales for the future, a confidence level, which I kind of look at like a standard deviation plus or minus this amount is where it could fall. A lower confidence bound, which is our minimum projected sales, and our upper confidence bound, which is our maximum projected sales. So how we're going to do that is we're going to insert a function. And again, I could do it right into the cell. I could do it in the input line, but I'm going to do it from the function wizard. So before we go into our function wizard, we need to make sure we're in the correct cell to start our calculations or our forecasting. And in this case, we're not. We want to start with the year 2022, so we need to make sure that we are in cell C23. Now we can go to our function wizard. Our function wizard box pops up, and in the search, we want to put forecast, and we're going to use forecast.ets.add. Now don't worry, I will put this into the description for your reference. And now we're going to hit next. And our function arguments box pops up. Our target is what year are we looking for? Well, in this case, we are looking for 2022. So we're going to select cell A23. Our values is what previous sales data are we using to project or forecast future sales? Well, in this case, we are using sales from 2001 through 2021. And if you notice, the dollar signs here is what I was referring to earlier when I said using the function wizard will take care of any absolute cell references that we need to do. Our timeline is what previous years are we using to forecast this data? Well, it's the same as our sales 
but we're going to select the year 2001 through 2021. Our period length defaults to one because there is one sample. So we're going to select one. Then we're going to scroll down. Our data completion defaults to one and that's what we want to do. So let me explain interpolate. What that means is if there is data missing, it's going to kind of, I hate to use the word guess, but that's what it's doing. It's doing an analysis and making a call as to what that should be to where if we put a zero, it's going to treat missing points as a zero. So you need to decide if you need it to treat them as zeros or to kind of replace that blank. But in this case, it's okay. So we're just going to use a one. Our aggregation is what means are we using to project or forecast our data? Now we have multiple to choose from. We've got sum, count, count A, max, min. But in this case, we're going to select one because it is average and that's what it defaults to. So now we can tell it, okay, and our forecast sales is $1,201,135. Now, if you notice, it's roughly $200,000 more than when we did the linear forecast. And the reason being is if you remember in our functions argument box, we fed it a lot more data to consider when it was giving us this number. Now we can come over to the corner, double click, and it will carry our data down. And now we have forecast sales from 2022 through 2027. So now let's look at our confidence levels. And now what this tells us is how stable, good, or accurate our forecasted sales data is. And sometimes I refer to this as a standard deviation, and I will show you why in just a second. So to get our confidence level, we're going to go to our function wizard. And in search, we're going to type in forecast. And this time we're going to select forecast.ets.pi.add. We're going to tell it next. And our function arguments box pops up. Let me go ahead and move this. Our target is our year. And again, we're looking for 2022 or A23. Our values is the same. What sales data are we using? Well, we're using sales from 2001 to 2021. Our timeline is the same as in what years are we using? Well, we're still using 2001 through 2021. Now we come to our confidence level and it can be zero to 100%. I would not advise using 100% because that is just not gonna be accurate. The default confidence level is 95, so that's what I would use. So 0 0.95 and that will get us close enough. And then our period length is gonna be the same at one. Our data completion, one. And our aggregation is one. And we're going to tell it okay. Now that gives us a confidence level of $222,631. Now you're like, well, that's an amount. That's not a percentage. That's what it's supposed to be. If we double click and carry it down, now we have a dollar amount for each line. So now I want to explain why I sometimes refer to the confidence levels as standard deviations. So this $1.2 million is accurate within plus or minus $222,631. And we're going to see that when we use it to calculate our lower confidence bound, which is our minimum sales projections, and our upper confidence bound, which is our maximum sales projections. So let me show you how that works. If we go to our lower confidence level, we can do equals our forecast sales, minus our confidence level or our standard deviation and hit enter. And it's going to give us our minimum projected sales at over $978,000. If we select it, double click, it will carry that down through 2027. We can do the same thing with upper, except for we will do equals our forecast sales plus our confidence level or standard deviation, enter, double click, and it will carry that down through 2027. So now what we're looking at is minimum projected sales of over $978,000. Maximum projected sales of over 1.4 million with a stable forecast projection of around 1.2 million. 
So let's create a chart to make our data easy to read and analyze. So one of the first things I did was on my predicted sales tab is I took the zoom down from 170 to 100. If it is too big, we're going to have trouble pulling it into the source for our chart. So if you ever have a chart that looks weird, check your zoom on your source data just to make sure it's not too big. So over on our chart tab, I'm going to click anywhere and I'm going to go up to insert chart and I'm going to do a line chart and I'm going to tell it points and lines. I'm going to click next. Now my data range is going to be the data on my predicted sales. Now if you notice, this is a mess. It has got all of my dates on the right and my column headers here and you just can't read anything. So where it says data series and rows, I'm going to change it to data series in columns. And now it's put the dates at the bottom and it's put my column headers on the right. My first row is a label, 2001. My first column is a label. So that looks correct now. Let's go to next. Now there are some fields on here I don't want. It looks like maybe just one. This confidence level looks way off by itself and if you're in a meeting, everybody's gonna be focusing here and they do not need to see that. So we can go and select confidence level and we can remove it. And now the outlier is gone. We can go next again and we can give it a title. And I'm just gonna call this forecast sales through 2027. And then we can tell it where we want the legend. I have it on the right. We can put the legend on the bottom. We can put it on the right where we had it. We can put it on the left, but I'm gonna keep it on the right. And now we're gonna tell it to finish. Let me make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. Okay, so now there's maybe a couple more things I wanna change. Like this over here has all of our dollar amounts in $200,000 increments, and it just looks crowded to me. So what I'm gonna do is click, right click, and I'm gonna tell it to format the axis. And it's gonna bring this box up here. Now our minimum shows zero, which is fine. Our maximum shows two million, which is fine. But our major interval is where we're showing 200,000 between them. And I think that's a little much. So I'm going to uncheck automatic. And I'm going to make this maybe 400,000. I don't know zeros <laughs> between them. And I'm going to tell it OK. So that to me looks a lot better. It gives our audience an idea. And if they want to know exactly, if we hover over our points, it's going to tell us what that dollar amount is is. So that looks good as far as formatting goes. Now let's look at the data in our chart. This blue line represents our sales. If we go to our predicted sales tab, it's in column B. And if you remember the years 2022 through 2027 were linear projections. The burgundy line at the top is our upper confidence bound. That is column F, and we also refer to it as our maximum sales projections. The green line is our lower confidence bound, which is column E, and we refer to it as our minimum sales projections. The orange line is our forecast sales. Now that is in column C, and that is where LibreOffice Calc projects that our sales revenue will fall for the years 2022, through 2027. And there you have it. Now you know how to forecast or predict future sales based on past sales in LibreOffice Calc. Now just keep in mind that it's not going to be exact, but it can give you a fairly decent idea of where your company is heading in the future. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Drop me a comment if you have any questions, feedback, or ideas for future tutorials. And be sure to click that subscribe button before you leave. And don't forget, if you need to see the written instructions with screenshots for this tutorial, hop on over to my website, melcompton.com, and you can find it there. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. Until then, thanks so much for watching.